Today in our 2015 Ram 2500, you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to show you how I installed the SMI Air Force One Supplemental Braking System for Motorhomes with Air Brakes, part number SM99243. Here's a look at the main component of our braking system. The actuator is going to provide a proportional force on our brakes in our towed vehicle. What that means is, while we are traveling, when we apply our brakes in our RV, our braking system in our towed vehicle will match the amount of force being applied. That will allow our towed vehicle to stop on its own rather than the RV stopping both vehicles, in turn saving the brakes on the RV. Now that we're hooked up to our RV, I'm going to apply the brakes in the RV to make sure our indicator light is working properly. The indicator light should be seen through the rear view camera on the RV as you're traveling. Now we're going to test out our actuator to make sure it's depressing our brake pedal and our towed vehicle. Here we're going to have part of your kit for your Air Force One. Now this is going to be the vehicle, the towed vehicle side. We also have the side that goes on the RV. I want to go over what's going to go on with the vehicle. Here we have the operating unit. This is what's going to send the power from your RV when the brakes are applied into your towed vehicle and applies the brakes in the towed vehicle. How it does that, you have two airports here. Because we have a diesel, we're not going to be using the vacuum line. It has a hydro boost brake system. So this will be blocked off and we have another port over here that's going to be blocked off. We're just going to be using the air in and air out. This is your brake actuator. This is going to mount to your brake pedal arm inside the vehicle. This bracket here is going to be mounted to your firewall. How this works is the airline tube that's running from your operating unit is going to run into the top of this cylinder. And when, this, when the brakes are applied in the RV, when the car is being flat towed, it's going to put pressure, air pressure inside this cylinder and it's going to spread it like this. When it does that, it actually is going to pull the brake pedal towards this bracket. So if you notice that line moving, that's how the brakes are applied in the towed vehicle. This is your roll of airline tube that's going to run from your air in and out ports from your operating unit to your cylinder on your brake pedal and then the other one will run to the air out on the front of the vehicle. Next we're going to have the breakaway switch. It's going to have a cable that connects from the front of this cord or the end of this cord to the hitch on the RV. If anything ever happens where the vehicle comes separated from the RV, it will pull this switch and automatically apply the brakes in the towed vehicle, bringing it to a stop. That way it's not bouncing around the highway causing an accident. To mount this or your breakaway switch and your uh, air outlet, I suggest getting a long bracket. It's going to look like this. This is actually going to mount to your base plate. And then what we're going to do is we'll drill a couple holes and we're actually going to mount these side by side right on there. This is going to be our tank for our air. These are going to be our connections or our T connections for our air lines. And then this is our hardware to mount this uh, wherever we choose. Now this hardware uh, you can change, put bigger washers, longer bolts, whatever it is, wherever you decide to mount it. Here we're going to have our supply air. This is our air comes in, fills our tank. Here we have our metered air. We're going to have a line that comes off the bottom that runs through the back of the RV and goes to another L bracket. That's where your hose from the front of your towed vehicle to your RV get connected. That's how the air from the RV when you apply the brakes is being sent into the towed vehicle. So what I did is I started with my operating unit. The first thing to do is find a place to mount it. I actually chose to mount mine right on top of my fuse panel, or the lid to my fuse panel. It sits right next to my battery. What I did is I just drilled a hole in the top, a hole in the side. Ran a zip tie through it. Zip ties come in your kit. Um, this side here, I didn't drill through this side because this is where uh, we actually have a bolt that comes up and sits right here. Even though we're running a zip tie through it, I just didn't want to interfere with it at all. So what I did is I drilled a second hole right here. That'll keep it on tight and still give you room to get to any of your fuses. If for some reason this, this will lift up 
it doesn't lift up all the way because it sits next to your battery. If for some reason uh, it's not enough room, you can just pop your lid off. Now, because we have a hydro boost system, we're not going to be using this port and this port. First thing we're going to do is we'll plug the one here on the side. In your kit, you're going to get a couple of things that look like this. Take that and we're going to stick it in here. Then we're going to thread on that cap. Next, we need to plug up our vacuum side, or vacuum port. You're going to get some uh, vacuum line that comes in your kit. You're going to cut off a piece. We're going to put it over that. I cut off, you can see it's two and a half, three inches. And you're going to take this plug and you're going to put it right in the end. Just like that. One thing I want to mention is mounting it up, up top here. You got to remember if you ever need to get in there, you got to have room. So leave your ground wire extra long. I left this long and I actually left my airline tube long too that's coming in here. Actually, both of them. This one I just pushed extra down inside behind the grill so that if I need to, or if they need to, they can just pull this out. They can lift it up. If they can't, they can take the lid off and they can set this aside. So just make sure you leave yourself enough line that you can access that in there. So this is what we did. My air fitting, my breakaway switch with the long bracket that I advise you to pick up. I mounted it to my base plate. I actually, what I did is I cut it down so it sat even with the edge of the bumper. And I just drilled a couple holes to mount both of them onto it. I just mount them right next to each other. My orange wire with the black stripe and blue wire coming off my breakaway switch in my airline tube, I ran them right up behind my base plate, behind my grill right here. I came up right through here. So this is my airline tube, my blue and uh, orange and black wires running right through my wire loom. Once I got my wire up, I just took my wire loom and just fed it onto it. I ran it underneath here just to keep it stable. Again, as I mentioned, one of my black wires coming off my operating unit, attach it to the black or to the uh, blue wire. Heat shrink, take a heat source, shrink that up. My brown wire, the brown extra brown wire that was in the kit, the airline that's coming off of here that I said is going to go into inside the vehicle through the firewall. I ran it around. I ran it underneath my cables here on my battery just to keep it tucked in. There's a grommet right back here in the corner that runs right into through the firewall. What I did is I ran my, uh, took my brown wire, taped it to the end, ran my airline tube through. I had my brown wire out here. I connected my brown wire to the end of my orange and then my fuse holder to the end of that uh, buck connector. Now, if connecting this to the battery is going to be the last thing we do. So we did that. What I did is I just covered my airline tube and my brown wire with some wire loom, just to kind of clean it up a little bit. My other black wire, put a ring terminal on it. I'm going to ground it right here to this body ground. Our outside is basically done, other than doing our ground wire and our fuse holder. We're going to do that last. Now we can move to the inside, hook up our indicator light, our brake actuator, and our reed switch. Before we start installing our lights, or our indicator light up top, and our wiring down here, I'm gonna pop this panel off right here. You're just gonna pull out on the bottom. Go ahead and pop it out, we'll set it aside. Because what we're gonna do is when we run our wires, we're gonna run our wires up behind all of this, underneath our headliner, and we're actually gonna stick all of our wire back here and feed it down, and it's gonna hide it all. So you can see how I uh, mounted my indicator light. I'm gonna make sure the wire's going up. Uh, you wanna make sure you clean off the back side and you're not covering any sensors. I just fed my wire, push it up into my headliner, right across. When I got to here, your A-pillar, this cover here, if you have a side curtain airbag, uh, if your vehicle is equipped with a side curtain airbag, you want to make sure that that wire is not going over the top of that bag. You're going to have to feed the wire behind it. So, this one does not. My wire runs right inside here. 
take a trim panel tool, just pull it out like that and tuck your wire in all the way around. And if you pull this out, you can tuck your wire all the way in and down. And you can see where it comes out. I'll feed it right under there. And then once I get all my wires connected, if I can pull them back up and zip tie them up in here, I'll do that put my panel back on. Uh, my reed switch wires are not quite long enough, so they may not reach. I'm going to leave it off for now, though. So as I mentioned before, your reed switch has a brown, blue, and black wire. The brown wire that we ran in through the firewall hooks to the brown wire on the reed switch. The black wire coming from your indicator light that's mounted on your mirror goes to the blue wire on the reed switch. The red wire on the indicator light goes to the black wire on the reed switch. So you see how I have my actuator mounted. I mounted my bracket right to the firewall. I want to make sure that you have about a quarter inch of play in the line. If this line is tight, what it does is it applies the brake and then your brake lights are always on. So we don't want the, we want that when it's released to release the brake all the way. So how I did it was I mounted this on here, but I left it loose just enough where it holds it, but I could still move it by hand. I got my cable set, mounted this, and then I can adjust the tightness of this by moving this forward or backwards. That's just a matter of loosening the nuts. Once you get it set to where you have just about a quarter inch, uh, maybe a little bit more is fine, but don't make it too loose, then tighten everything down. Run your airline tube that you ran through your firewall right into the top. You wanna to mount that reed switch on there first because there's a little tiny screw on there. Uh, it does make it a little bit easier before you put your actuator on your, ar your brake pedal arm. Other than that, I zip tied my wires right here to this existing wiring. Now I can put my panel back on and go do the RV side. Went ahead and hooked up my ground wire. We'll take that bolt off. I went ahead and hooked up my fuse holder to my positive side of my battery. 10 millimeter socket will take that off also. Now, when you hook this up, you wanna make sure you don't have the fuse in. The fuse is the last thing you put in once you have all your connections made. Now that we have them made, we'll go ahead and put our fuse in. Now as far as on our RV side, we're going to be installing our air tank and our air fittings on this 2018 Tiffin Allegro bus. So here underneath our RV, um, our customer had this previously installed, which I showed you uh, at the beginning of the video. Uh, they just mounted it right to this solid uh, wall here. Uh, it looks like they use self-tapping screws. Um, instead of the bolts and nuts and washers that come with the kit. So now we have our supply line, our metered air, and then our line that runs back to our T fitting or air fitting that's mounted on the back of the RV. Our supply line, which goes into the tank, which is this line here. It runs up. And if you follow it up, you see this really thick, green hose here. It's going to be the larger of the two. Before you cut any of these lines, you want to make sure that you let all the air out of the brakes. What I mean is, once you shut it off, you're going to push on the brakes until all of the air on your gauges is out. Because if you cut that line with air in there, it's going to blow out air real fast and it's going to blow out a lot. So and you don't want to hurt yourself. So make sure you bleed all the air out first. Once you do that, cut that line. Uh, make sure that the hose is cleaned before you put the fitting on. Make sure it's straight or a flat cut. Don't make sure it's not angled. Feed it into both ends of the T-fitting and then your air line, which you're gonna have some left over from uh, your install. Again, that's gonna be your line it runs into your tank, that's your supply line. It's gonna run into your small tank uh, from your system that you installed. Then you're gonna have your meter there, which is it's gonna be this center valve here. And it sits right on top of uh, this section here. This line, you follow it around. What they did is they just tied directly into it. Again, this brass fitting comes in your kit. This line right here, uh, if this wasn't here, this would be tied in right here. All they did was took this out, 
installed this fitting, put that on one side and then your supply air line onto the other side. When you connect these, uh, the brass fitting, or you connect these two, and even the brass fitting into here, uh, you want to make sure you put some, uh, some tape on it. This line is what runs to the back of the RV to the, t to the L bracket in our air fitting that's going to connect to our towed vehicle, or connect the line between our towed vehicle. So this, uh, you can basically route this any way you want to to the back of the vehicle. Just make sure you stay away from anything hot or moving. And then here is the L bracket mounted to the back of the RV. This can be mounted anywhere as long as you leave yourself enough line to get to the back of it. It's going to have a little cap on it like this. You want to make sure you hold on to them so that when you're not using it, you can put that cap back on. It keeps anything from getting inside of this hole and clogging it. And that goes for your uh, Dodge Ram side too, or your towed vehicle side also. Now we're going to hook up our airline. This comes with your kit also. We're going to go ahead and hook it up and test everything out. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the SMI Air Force One Supplemental Braking System for Motorhomes Repair Brakes, part number SM99243 on our 2015 Ram 2500.